captain's log, start date 43221.7. All right, leg number eight and the fourth. Trip number nine, 87 octane, aero mode. All right, trip number, I think, 10, maybe. This episode of the High Mileage Ram is brought to you by Real Truck. Stick around to the end of the video. I have some more information for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to Truck Central. I'm Mr. Justin Wheeler, and this is my 2019 Ram 1500 Limited High Mileage Edition. If I were to go into the comprehensive High Mileage Ram playlist that we have compiled over the last year and a half, and I went through every single comment and I picked the one comment that was most talked about, at least the topic anyway, it would probably be fuel economy. Lots of people ask questions about, is your mileage improved with the intake or the tuner? Do the tires hamper the fuel economy? What do you get while you tow? Just all kinds of things, but you know, more or less what they're asking is what kind of economy does the fifth gen Hemi half ton get? Now the this drivetrain isn't anything new. I don't get much different gas mileage than I got with my fourth gen half ton Hemi, but there are some things about this truck that may make it different uh, from other half tons. Now before I share this information with you, I want you to understand, I did not just hit trip on the way over here and that's the information I'm going to give you. Since the test started in late 2020, I have been doing tests with varied fuel types, 85, 86, 87, 89, 91 octane. I have modified the uh, ride height setting between aero and normal. I have changed the distance. I have changed the miles per hour. And I've even done multiple tests pulling a trailer and I have the weights of all the trailers I've pulled, my total combined weight, um, to see where that fits in. Now, I've decided I'm not going to do a fully, fully in-depth review of the fuel economy today because, quite frankly, it would take probably an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, to go through every single test I ran and give you breakdown data. But what I can do for you is kind of shed light on what you can expect on average because what the EPA claims is not anywhere near what I get and that's even with a fairly slow driving style it's even with the intake and the tuner I do not get 22 miles on the highway nor do I get 19 combined hell I don't barely get 19 on the highway so let's jump into it so we're going to get started with me explaining what my worst fuel economy is and what that configuration looked like and what my best ever fuel economy has been, what that configuration looks like and what my average is based on limited payload, no trailer, moderate driving on the highway and in the city. And then you can kind of gauge where you fall based on that. Please keep in mind there are so many variables here to consider. People in the comments say, hey, I'm getting this many miles per gallon, and this guy's like, man, that's way better than me. You have to remember uh, where you live. If you're at a high elevation area with a heavy foot, your mileage is going to be different than somebody at a low elevation uh, area with a soft foot, the opposite of a heavy foot, a slow driver, conservative driver, a responsible driver. Um... And then, you know, you have to keep in mind that there's just going to be a lot of variability. One other thing I noticed before I hit you with the data is that you just can't always trust the numbers that the computer is giving you on the dash. I've seen such a huge range in, uh, in the miles per gallon that tells you you're getting, even when my variables are very similar or keep or consider that sometimes I will do something that should improve the MPGs, like go from a faster uh, cruise control speed to a slower cruise control speed, and uh, at a lower speed, I get worse economy. So I don't trust the computer 
and I've got something that's going to kind of fact check that and as be a redundancy for what the truck tells you. And I think that's also obvious, but some people may not realize that. Some people may think that exactly what it tells you is what you're getting. Um, I think that there are some other variables involved. That's not always the telltale, you know, final word on your economy. And keep in mind the tests that I ran based on the computer miles per gallon, they were all over the board. I did a batch of tests at 26.4 miles, a batch of tests at 50, batch of tests at 100, and a batch of tests at 400. And I did that for probably, well, I've done it for over the last 70,000 miles, but I logged close to 10,000 miles specifically tracking fuel economy. So this is fairly involved, fairly engaged. That's why it's taken so long. And then finally, as a second layer, like I mentioned, is this handy little spreadsheet export. If this looks familiar to you, it's because this is what I went over in my uh, cost of ownership video. We'll leave a link to that as well. And it's in the playlist with all the other videos. What this is, is every single fuel charge or uh, every single fill up I've had in this truck since the day it was new. 10,546 gallons of fuel, over $25,000 worth of fuel I've put in this truck since I bought it brand new in August of 2019. You might be thinking, well, you know exactly how many gallons you've bought and you know how many miles you've driven. Hmm. Now you're smelling what I'm stepping in. Based on those numbers, this truck, guess, guess what my MPGs are based on my miles per gallon. 13.8. 13.8. We'll call it 14 to be nice. 14 miles per gallon I've averaged based on every single last drop of fuel. And, it, and it's pretty exact. I've actually put in 10,546.846 gallons. And granted, that is that is not based on my current uh, mileage. That's based on the mileage at the time that I exported this document, which was 1,000, or I'm sorry, 142,598. And... Uh, that's where we get the 13.8. Now, keep in mind, there were a few miles on this truck when I bought it. It was brand new, but, you know, people test drove it. Um, so there's a few gallons I'm missing. So it's just actually going to be worse than that because I'm missing some miles. Why is mine so bad? Especially because I'm so heavy on the highway side versus the city side. Well, my idle hours is... Uh, 23% of my total engine hours, I've got over 1,300 idle hours that factor into this. So that's fuel burned while not moving. And that significantly changes what it looks like on paper. If you were to just look at this, you know, that's, that's really, really poor. But there's a lot of times this truck just sits and runs and doesn't have the mileage to account for the fuel burn. Now, if I'm not exactly sure how I could back out the idle hours because I don't know what the truck burns at idle. If anybody knows that, I would love to hear about it down in the comments because then I could effectively back out that many gallons, rerun my numbers, and then get kind of a updated um, miles per gallon while driving, not just the idling score. But even with all the idling, I don't, that's not the worst thing in the world. I have done a lot of towing as well. You guys have seen the videos where we tow the big heavy gooseneck trailer, lots of boat pulling, utility trailer pulling, um, just random hauling materials around or, or equipment. So that's also factored in. And there were probably 5,000 miles of driving with the gooseneck where I was getting like six or seven miles a gallon, which really brings down the uh, overall mile per gallon. I keep wanting to call it a score, my my 13.8 score, which I guess it kind of is the score. And some people get better, 
Some people get worse. Ultimately, though, most people are going to get more than 14. I'm on the far end of the spectrum for high idle hours and heavy duty towing. I think probably what most people would see are numbers in the 17 to 18 range. I do want to mention the very, very, very best I've seen. And this is, I probably should have opened with this and I went straight to the meat and potatoes. The best I've seen was 22.1. And I'll show you a little clip here of that. Okay, we're mixing up the test a little bit. We're going to break it down into 50 mile intervals. So I'm at 89 octane, normal ride height, 50 miles, 65 miles per hour at 22.1. Or was it 22 point, 22 point something? And that was a short trip. That was, I think, I, I think that was 89 octane, normal ride height, going at a slow speed. And then what I noticed, I think that was at 65 miles per hour. So that that's kind of the key. What I found is aero mode, low speed, and a high octane fuel provide the best results. The aero mode does do a good job on average and i've got a not just this spreadsheet i have another spreadsheet with all of my test results on average aero mode will increase your fuel economy with all other variables at bay or or are fixed because i'm doing the same trip all the time on multiple or the same day multiple days in a row aero mode produced a 0.5 mpg increase on average so 0.5 miles per gallon. Now, if you were to extrapolate that over the course of 10,000 gallons of fuel, there's actually a pretty significant savings there, a savings that might justify going up to the higher trim level just with fuel savings alone. What I mean by that is by driving in aero mode all the time, if you were to increase by 0.5 miles per gallon over the course of 150,000 miles you might save enough to make it worth upgrading to the limited trim package because i know what a lot of people think hey i don't want to spend the extra eight nine ten grand on a limited but if you did and you had aero mode or the air ride suspension maybe it makes sense to get a nicer interior and a nicer ride quality and more utility not to mention it it hauls amazing. My truck never squats. That thing just sits flat no matter how much weight I put on the ball or in the bed. Very impressed with the air ride so far. And it actually could pay for itself. I haven't run those numbers. That could be part of the unabridged fuel economy video. But it is very important and something worth looking at and taking into consideration. Also curious if anybody else has noticed the same thing if they've got a limited trim package. Are you seeing half mile per gallon increase, more or less? Mine varied, but on average, I think the Delta was 0.5 miles per gallon. Hang on a second. Justin from the future here. I recorded this MPG video yesterday and I had a little, you know, quick strolled down the street today and as i'm driving i realized i don't think i really mentioned what my my average is based on what the truck tells me and historically i'm right around 16 and a half miles per gallon that's just kind of normal day-to-day -day cruising around no trailer no real attention paid to the uh to the economy just normal driving it averages about 16.5 today i have put 625 miles on the old odometer and uh we're actually seeing 17.2 which is surprisingly good anyway that's that's on the higher end of what i get typically it's usually closer to 16 and a half so i hope this information is helpful to you if you guys are interested in a more expounded upon fuel economy test video. I will take the time to put that together. Like I said, it's not going to be that relevant for everyone. This is more for people that are interested in Rams, thinking about buying one. 
is economy good? Is it worth the, uh, is it going to be a good purchase for me? And then the, the, um, more detailed video would be for actual Ram owners probably who are interested, but we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. One last thank you to realtruck.com for sponsoring this video and all the fuel saving parts that we have installed. If this was helpful to you, please let me know down in the comments. You know, I like talking to you and as always, thanks for watching.